Hey everyone, Jeremy here. Hey, I'm back with another video, and this time we're going to cover how to set up Megascans assets for use with RenderMan. Now, I've been using Megascans assets extensively over the past, I would say, year, 18 months, and it's completely changed the way I approach my work and my shots. Uh, there's an extensive collection of assets available at your fingertips so you can spend less time creating these things and more time building scenes and telling stories and, and doing the fun stuff in my opinion so uh, I thought it'd be beneficial to jump in and set up a few different assets uh, a few different ways um, and then in a subsequent video I am going to take some assets and actually build a scene from scratch so uh, this video, uh, we're going to set up a few assets, and uh, the first one will be coming from the Quixel Bridge client application. And the second asset I'll just pull straight from the web, so we can kind of take both approaches, even though they're, they're about the same. So with that, uh, let's get started. Alright, so I have Quixel Bridge open um, on my desktop, and... The reason why I prefer Quixel Bridge over the normal web application is you can actually link assets to your DCC application, such as Maya. Now, RenderMan isn't a supported renderer at the current moment, so the only benefit of doing using Bridge right now is to automatically port over the geometry into your scene. Now, for a single asset, that doesn't seem like a time saver, but for things like grasses and plants where there are many varieties or variations, it is actually a time saver. So that's why I, I take the bridge approach uh, for most of what I do. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is open up bridge. It's a free download for Quixel um, subscribers. So open that up and you, from here you can search directly and find what you're looking for. They have several collections that kind of group uh, uh, similar assets together or you can search just their whole library. So for this demo, I'm gonna go to some assets that I already have and I'm gonna look for a grass. So the scene I wanna do is, is like a grassy field. So. I'm going to take the swamp grass, for example, we'll set this one up. And in this example, I have already uh, downloaded it, so that's why it says re-download or export. For something that I have not downloaded locally to my hard drive, it, you'll get this, you'll get this, the, the download button here. So for the swamp grass, if we look, the asset info gives you a little blurb about it. The download settings is where you're going to set which maps you want uh, and which resolution. So typically I go 4K, uh, FBX, LOD, level of detail zero. So the reason why they have multiple LODs is packages such as Unreal can automatically uh, change the level of detail geometry based on the distance from the camera and, and so forth. So that's what, uh, these are really geared toward uh, real-time applications. But for something like RenderMan, I really just want a high resolution model that I can set up and use in my scenes. So I'm going to download the level of detail zero, which is the high res, the highest res available for this particular asset. And if we go down to the maps, um, I'm, what I have selected is what I typically download to set up the albedo, displacement, the normal roughness, translucency, ambient occlusion, cavity, opacity, and specular. I don't need gloss because I'm downloading the roughness and I don't typically use the bump because the normal and the combination of normal and dis displacement uh, suit my needs. So with that, I'm actually going to uh, you can just click redownload, or in, or in a case where you're downloading a new asset, just click download. And you'll get a progress bar. Um, it's, with a redownload, it probably didn't show, but it's downloaded locally now. 
then once you have it downloaded, you'll actually have options to export. So to export to your application, in my instance, I'm going to be using Maya. You actually have to have a Maya plugin running and then Maya instance running as well. So to do that, so right out of the gate, if I were to click export right now, it, I'm going to get an error because it could not send data over port, yada, yada. I don't have that plugin running in Maya right now. So that's, I'm just doing this as an example on how to get this working. So you go over to export settings, export to, and you can select your application of choice. For me, it's Maya. And they have a little script here that you need to run. So I'm going to copy it to my clipboard. I'm going to go over to Maya. And in this little line or in the script editor, uh, usually it's defaulted to Mel. I'm going to click that to switch it to Python, paste that in, and hit enter. Now that's going to launch the plugin and a custom shelf for the, uh, the bridge to use. So with that running, if I were to now, again, verify my maps and click export, I should get uh, exported successfully. Well, actually, you'll come over here and you'll, you'll notice your current render engine is not supported. Well, I'm not using, uh, or like I mentioned before, RenderMan is not a supported renderer for Bridge. So what we have to do is uh, load Arnold, which is built into Maya, to export the geometry, and then we can switch back over to RenderMan. So to find the Arnold plugin, I, I believe it's called M2A, yep, and it's already loaded in my case. You'll just wanna click that to load Arnold, and then in your render settings, change it over to the Arnold renderer. So now we're using Arnold. I'm gonna open the bridge back up and click export exporting to Maya successfully. And we can actually see Maya is doing stuff now, which is a good, which is a good sign. So after it loads up, you can see that we have our, all of our variations for our swamp grass. There are actually 12 different variations. And now this is where I prefer using the bridge over the web application because otherwise I would be manually importing 12 different FBX files, which takes time. So it's a time saver. Even though the shaders aren't set up for my use, it still saves me some time. So I'm gonna switch the render back over to RenderMan. And I'm going to start setting this up. So I'm going to open up the Hypershade. I'm gonna select all of these and I'm just gonna assign the default shader to it and delete all the Arnold shaders that were initially set up. Maybe one day the bridge will support RenderMan and that would be a huge, huge, huge time saver. So in my scene now, I've got 12 different variations of the swamp grass. Well, when you click download in the bridge application, it downloads the assets with all these maps to a location. And for my location, it is down a path, CG Quixel Bridge downloaded. So I'm gonna go find um, the, uh, the grass that I just downloaded. Um, it's got kind of, uh, code names that can be hard to decipher, but it's uh, this is the one. It's got 12 variations in it. There's gonna be a textures folder, Atlas, and here are, here are the textures that I had selected over in the bridge. So um, I like to leave them in a central location. Now this isn't, this is definitely pipeline specific. If you're sharing projects, you wanna take all these textures, package them up in your project. Uh, but for this purpose, I'm going to leave them down the bridge path and then I'm going to link all my PXR textures to there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to be working in the hypershade for a bit. So I'm just going to maximize this window. I'm going to start with a PXR surface. The base of all of the magic here. So I'm going to name this Actually, I'm not going to name this yet. I'll, I'll 
run a script later that renames them all. And I'm going to start pulling in all the textures that I need. I'm going to do a PXR texture. Um, I'm going to go to download it, 3D plant, textures, atlas. We're just going to load these up one at a time. Albedo is going to be our diffuse, so we want to linearize that. We'll plug that into the color. I'm going to have another PXR texture. Um, I'm just going to work through this. I kind of have a, a force of, you know, a method to this. I just kind of step through the roughness. I'm not going to linearize that because it's a data texture. Result R, specular roughness. And you'll notice I'm duplicating these. I have a hotkey set up to duplicate them. Um, so I'll be using that quite a bit. So after the roughness, I'm going to plug in the specular to the specular face color. I'm going to take the edge color to white. And since this is a color node, I am going to linearize that one. Uh, stepping down the line here, let's go um, opacity. So the alpha cutouts. Do not want to linearize that. I'm going to take that, plug that into the presence. Take another PXR texture. There should be a translucency. So that is going to be linearized. So under the advanced tab under diffuse, we're going to enable double sided because these plants are single sided faces. We want uh, textures to be visible on both sides of those faces. So I'm going to plug in the um, the translucency into the transmit color and typically the transmit gain I'm going to stick around 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Uh, this is sh shot specific you can fine tune this later um, but for that I'll leave that there. And I'll keep rocking down these. So we have a few, so we have the ambient occlusion, the cavity, and displacement, and the normal left actually. So I'm gonna go the ambient occlusion. And what I typically do with the ambient occlusion is multiply this over the diffuse or the albedo. So I'm gonna do a PXR blend. I'm going to plug in the albedo into the bottom, the ambient occlusion into the top, and um, we do not want to linearize the ambient occlusion. We're going to set the operation to multiply, and I'll plug that into the color. So I could have saved some time and done that initially. Now, same concept for the cavity map. Cavity maps are typically used in real time to fake some of the occluded areas. Uh, in the specular, so I'm going to load in the cavity map, again not linearized, and I'm going to multiply this over the specular map the same way that I did the ambient occlusion. Multiply, and that's going to be my specular face color. So I've got a lot of excellent maps, full 4K maps that come straight from Quixel, which is awesome. So um, next one, I'm going to do a PXR normal map. That takes a different node, a PXR normal map node. I'm going to load in the normal for this. Uh, and that's going to be at the bottom. And the globals, the bump slot here. And now the only remaining item is going to be the displacement. So I'm going to take a PXR texture, non-linearized. I'm going to take the EXR. Now in the download settings, it downloads a JPEG as well in case you want to use it or at least reference it just to look at. I'm going to load up the EXR. Now, anytime you do a displacement, unless set up otherwise specifically, we're going to be using um, a displacement transform node. 
And the reason for this note is to actually center the displacement, the, the grayscale. That way it takes the incoming map 50% gray value and that sets the surface, the mid of the surface. So anything above 50% gray is going to displace upward. Anything below 50% gray in the image is going to displace downward. And that's what this remapping mode does. So I'm going to take the result R, plug it into the displacement scalar of the displaced transform, and then the result float from the displaced transform and plug it into a PXR displace node into the disp scalar slot. Now to hook this up, there are a few ways to do this. In my RenderMan preferences, I have it set up to use the Maya plugs. If you have it set up to use the RenderMan plugs, this will be set up differently for you. If you're using the Maya plugs, you take the output color and plug it into the displacement shader of the shading group, like so. If you're using RenderMan plugs, you take the out color and plug it into the, an other slot, the RMan displacement. That's what you do. But I'm using the Maya plugs. I'm just used to this setup, so that's what I've stuck with. So with that, this shader should be set up. I'm going to go back here, select all my geometry, and assign it. Now you might have noticed in my, some of my previous videos, I'm I'm pretty crazy about naming these things and having all these PXR textures kind of makes me a little crazy. Well, I have a script that kind of goes through and can rename stuff. So I don't I don't typically worry about it as I'm creating things. I go back and clean it up later. That's just kind of how I've I've grown to to work. So I have this shader assigned to all of these variations. I'm going to just take these. I'm going to space these out just so I can get a good feel for how they're looking. There's probably a uh, script to do this as well, but I'm just going to drag them out. I'm big into scripting. Saves, a, saves me a lot of time in most tasks. All right, so we have that. We need to add some lights. So my render man is loaded. Render man 23.1 is what I'm using here. I'm just gonna add a dome light. And I'm just, let's throw in just the Luxo outdoor shot. And I'm going to turn off primary visibility so I can get a better look at these things, uh, blades of grass. So I'm gonna save this in my assets. This is gonna be swamp grass. I'm just gonna save the scene. Typically in my shots, I set up my assets in a separate scene and then import them into my master scene after they're all set up. Just keeps things cleaner that way. So from this, uh, if you this is a fresh new asset you've never rendered, all of your textures need to be converted to the .txt format, render map proprietary format. So I would go in and do a batch preview render and then I'll run through and do a TX make on all of your textures. Now I've already run through this, so my textures are there. So I'm just gonna kick off an IPR to start things off. So this will load up. And actually, uh, apparently my, not all my textures weren't converted. They're converting them in real time right now. You'll see the, the blue and, and gray RenderMan logo uh, textures to indicate that those textures are being converted. So I'm just going to pause just for a minute while these textures convert. All right, so my textures are converted. Sorry about that. I thought they had, uh, I had already previously converted them, but it just takes a moment. Uh, the higher the resolution, the longer it's gonna to take to convert. Uh, so keep that in mind. So here we are running an IPR. Things are looking pretty decent. There's a few things on the geometry I like to do. 
uh, to set these up a little further. So a as the IPR is running, let's see what the resolution. It's hard going to a single monitor working. I want to grab all the geometry. I'm going to open up the attribute spreadsheet, which uh, Windows General Editor's um, attribute spreadsheet. I have it hotkeyed. I'm going to go over to the Renderman tab and I'm going to apply a subdivision scheme to these guys. Catmull Clark. So if we go view this, if I hit the T key, that should, the it window should stay on top. So now it's going to subdivide these. Uh, I've noticed in some assets, these ones actually look pretty good, but some assets that you can kind of see the faceting on them. So I do tend to subdivide these assets. It is going to take a moment, moment as they subdivide. Looking good. Um, and also for one more thing I like to do is the I see some areas where there could potentially be some issues with the displacement and the displacement bound. So I'm going to come back over here into the attribute spreadsheet. I still have my, all my geometry selected. I'm going to scroll over to the displacement bound. I'm going to bump this up to say 0.3. I just want to look at some areas here, maybe in here, if they fill out. If the bound isn't big enough and you're displacing uh, beyond that, you'll get clipping of the geometry. So that's what the displacement bound is, is there to set. All right, and yet it does look like some of these areas have been filled in, which means there was some clipping. I wanna go up to 0.4 on the displacement bound just to play it safe. I like to go just a little high just so there's no additional clipping that goes on. And that's looking good. So one thing I like to do, now these look these look actually really good just right out of the gate. One thing I like to do, I'm gonna kill this IPR session uh, I want to set up a few AOVs just so I can check some of the levels, the specular and the translucency. And you can't add those while the IPR is running. So I'm, I killed the IPR. I'm going to go into my render settings, which are hidden. Go into the AOVs. I'm going to add direct diffuse, direct specular, and subsurface. And launch another IPR. So the direct diffuse and direct specular are self-explanatory. You'll see the, the albedo and the specular contribution of the texture that we applied. And the subsurface is where we'll see the tr double-sided transmit amount. So if we come here, now we have some channels. If I just hit the down arrow in my it window, we can see here's the diffuse, here's the specular and there's the subsurface, which is subtle. And I've found that if, if that gets driven too high, they start looking fluorescent and, and unnatural. So we can kind of play with that. If I go back over here into my hyper shade, I'll actually switch the side that this is on. Uh, if I go into my shader and say drive this up to one, you should see that this gets boosted quite a bit. And there we go, it looks, like I said, a little translucent, or not translucent, a little fluorescent. So I'm gonna just tone that back down to 0.3.4 range and Again, all this stuff can be tweaked on a per shot basis, and I, I fully expect to do so, but I like to have a good base shader set up before exporting. So now we're looking good. All right, so that, that in a nutshell 
is how I would set up um, some of these variations assets such as plants and grasses this kind of a setup now I mentioned I do have a, a script to rename I it's a pretty hack up script but I'm going to open the script editor and if you're interested I could paste it in the or I could put it in the description it's just a find replace on the file names um, so I'm gonna just take out all the PXRs and replace them with swamp grass underscore I have all my stuff highlighted I'm just gonna run that so it's running Pymel core takes a bit to load I try to avoid it when I can I probably don't need it in this script but it does take a sec for Pymel to to load and run but you'll see after it's done all my PXR textures have been renamed to swampgrass underscore whatever they were serve so keeps things clean I like to do that to keep my stuff organized so uh, from here I'm going to prepare these for export I'm going to group these swamp grass and I'm going to take them back to the origin so I'm going to again open up the attribute spreadsheet go over to translate and zero these out so now they're stacked and ready for say a mash network or, or something like that so I'm gonna hit save I'm going to do a file export selected and I'm going to export these as a Maya binary swamp grass export export selection so with that when I import that scene that I just exported I'm gonna get this group of swamp grass and I'm gonna get the shader which is perfect so from here I'm going to then jump over into the web application and we'll set up an asset that uh, a high poly asset like a, a rock or a boulder and show you how to set those up so here I have the Megascans website up it's basically the same interface as the uh, the bridge application but in case you don't have bridge or you just prefer to go off the web, I'm going to go down this route for this asset. So for this, I, again, I'm going to go to ones that I've already purchased, but you can find one that you'd like. And I'm going to find something that I'm looking for, a rock specifically, or a boulder that kind of goes along with these grassy field that I'm going to be setting up. Now, I think... I like this one, mossy rock. I like the the kind of the um, the directionality of the moss that is coming off the sides here. So I'm going to select this guy, and uh, the download settings here is a little different. Uh, it's this link right here. So for this asset, you can go up to 8K, which I'm going to take. Uh, you have specific presets that they've set up for you, and then again, FBX is the as the file type I'd like. Now for this particular asset, we're not dealing with a lot, uh, several variations of the same asset. We're dealing with one high poly asset. So for my purposes, again, I don't need these level of details. I'm not using this in real time applications. And for this, there's actually a high poly source. This is the, the scan data. So for an asset that you would like to have close to the camera a very high detailed hero asset I would use the high poly source if it's going to be somewhat in the background or blurred out with depth of field you could go down to the level of detail 0 or 1 but for this case I want to take the high poly source and you can actually get the Z tool from ZBrush as well if you're actually interested uh, I'm gonna go and then for the maps the albedo Bump. I don't need the cavity displacement the fuzz this particular asset has a fuzz map uh, which is there to indicate things like moss that have kind of a fuzzy reflection and specularity to them don't need the gloss uh, and then for the high poly source I'm going to take the normal bump and I don't need the normal the normal map would be specific to the level of detail 
the normal bump is going to be more high frequency detail that is applicable to the high poly source. The roughness map and specularity. Now if you're confused or ever curious on what some of these maps are, Quixel has a good um, uh, question in their Q&A area that kind of outlines the specific purposes of these maps. So it, if you just search on their website you can get a breakdown of all these different stuff so for like for example for the normal bump if you didn't know what it was it has a good description of that so I can leave a link to this page in the bottom of the, the video as well so with that I have all of my stuff set up here my download settings and I'm gonna click download you know download as a zip you'll notice as the hover over you can download assets up to four times faster using bridge so I guess that's another perk of using the bridge you get quicker downloads so my boulder has been downloaded I'm going to open it up here and it's just a zip file so now it's up to you to organize this as well so I, I've kind of provided a few perks of using the bridge the bridge has a central location where it downloads all of the files too and you can keep them there here now you just have a an archive that you need to place or organize how you see fit so for my example I'm just gonna take this whole folder I'm gonna take it over to the assets directory of my project and paste it in there and then reference all the textures from there so in here we can see we have all the maps plus a an FBX file and that's what we're gonna be importing and setting up so in my, I'm going to create a new scene, fresh scene here, and we don't need to worry about Arnold this time around because we are not using the bridge to link the asset. So I'm going to go directly to import this, and I'm going to import my FBX file. And this is a high poly asset, it's going to take a moment to import. Alright, so it came in and we are just under a million faces so it is very dense but that's great for close-up shots or something where you need that super high detail you can see very very high detail scanned so we're gonna set it up very similar to how we did the grass we're going to just kind of step through the textures and assign them to the PXR surface one at a time. So I just assigned the base uh, Lambert and deleted the default material that came with the FBX and we're gonna step through the process. Now this is very similar, some of the maps are gonna be a little different uh, this time around so it'll be kind of a good learning experience to walk through this one as well so we're, we're gonna go to this I'm gonna step through now these are 8k maps even just loading them in the in the preview takes a, a half second or so so forgive me as it as we chug through this so that's not what I want to do so I'm gonna plug this in and I can't remember if there was an ambient occlusion with this guy or not uh, I don't see, I see a cavity, fuzz bump, I don't see ambient occlusion. Let me just double check, there is not. So on the plants, I, I multiplied the ambient occlusion over the diffuse, this doesn't have it, so I'm just going to plug this straight in to the color slot, and I'm going to linearize that. Okay, I'm going to step through, next one I'm going to do the We'll go roughness, not linearized into the specular roughness. I'm going to take the specular, linearize that because it's a color, and I noticed there is a cavity map as well. So I'm going to just take this and do this all at the same time. I'm going to do what I did previously. I'm going to multiply them. Together. and there's no reason top or bottom uh, that multiplies a multiply you're just you're, you're getting the result multiplied from the two I just have a tendency to plug them in a specific order so this is going to be the specular face 
the edge color, I'm going to take the white. Let's see what else do we have. We have a fuzz map. So this is going to be white areas are where, say for example, moss is going to be on this rock and you're going to get some of that fuzz specularity. So I'm going to load this up and it's a data map so we're not going to linearize it. And I don't think it's on the high level so we're going to take the result R and plug it into the fuzz gain. we have I think we've knocked them all out so we don't one thing to note actually and I didn't need to download this is we do not need displacement on the high poly source the displacement is going to be taken based off of the high poly for the level level of detail geometry so I'm not going to be displacing this mesh so for that we actually are done with those maps we have a normal map though so we're going to plug in the normal bump and it's we got a bug here it's loading an old cached texture into the slot let's see if I can get it to refresh plug this in little bug there I'm gonna pause this all right so I actually had to restart Maya to get this to populate correctly I've seen this before the normal map node sometimes gets buggy so anyway I just loaded in the the normal map for this I'm gonna plug this in and this is actually all we need we don't need displacement like I mentioned before so I'm gonna sign this to that and what I'm gonna do now is do a batch preview render that's gonna convert the textures some of them have already been converted so I'm gonna pause this while they convert alright so my textures have converted now it's gonna go on and, and do a render I actually don't want it to I just wanted to convert the textures, so I'm gonna delete that uh, so at this point, I'm going to send up, set up a few AOVs just to check how the textures are looking. I'm going to go diffuse spec. I don't need subsurface here, but I am going to go the fuzz because there was a fuzz map. So I'm going to plug that in as well. And then I also need a, a light source. So let's just plug in the Luxo dome light. Turn off primary visibility. Set this up or frame this a little better here. And I'm going to kick off an IPR. Also, something to note here is we don't need to subdivide this mesh either. Because it's so high poly, you'd be doing more harm than good. So, right away, we're, we're, we look pretty good. Good, so let's step through. Here's our diffuse, specular. It's looking about right, and then here's our fuzz. Most of the specular is coming from the fuzz, as we can tell. Here's our spec and the fuzz, which is what we'd expect. So the fuzz is going to get this uh, Fresnel specularity from areas such as the moss that, that's kind of fuzzy. So we can orbit the, either the object or the light around just to kind of preview what this looks like I think it looks good and the great thing about mega scans is these maps come from scan data so there shouldn't be a whole lot of tweaking involved when it's setting up something basic like this when it comes to translucency and subsurface, that stuff is more subjective and shot specific, but stuff like albedo and specular is usually pretty spot on. So I'm going to cancel the, or the stop the IPR. And in my case, this is a heavy asset. 
when I import it into my main scene, I don't want, I might have a few copies of this, and I don't want several million faces just from copying this around. So I'm gonna export this as a rib, a rib archive, and then import the rib archive into my scene. So the rib is gonna have the texture baked into it, uh, which is fine, because I don't see myself tweaking the shader for this specific asset. So to do that, I'm gonna highlight it, render man, archive and we're going to export selected to rib now one thing before i do that i want to make sure in my plugin manager that i have abc export olympic cache export plugin loaded otherwise you're not going to get an uh, olympic cache exported with the rib which is what you use to visualize the geometry when you import the archive so it is loaded so i'm going to go archive export selected to rib rock rib export selection so that should be all we need to do from there uh, so now when we for example have a fresh scene and I want to import that and go tools or archive rather import rig, rib archive and we can import this rib and it's gonna you notice there's an Olympic cache file alongside the rib so when we load that you'll notice I'm getting the rib file and what I'm actually seeing is that cache that was exported the the rib itself is just a reference so uh, that's how that is so if I were to render in this blank scene I'm gonna get the same results from the rib so I'm just gonna do a quick dome light setup frame this and I'm going to just run an IPR and you'll see I get the same exact setup as I did with the real geometry even though this is just a rib file so cool we went through two separate ways to set up some mega scans assets one with Quixel bridge and one straight from the web now in the next video I'd like to take this a step further and produce a shot something like this using these assets that we've set up so these are just a handful of different grasses that i took from the quixel library here's the rock i just set up there's a couple of, um, copies of that in there and then a kind of this ground surface as well as is is also a, a mega scans surface asset as well so in the next video we'll go and set this up we'll kind of step through the scene and and um, build it from scratch so anyway thank you if you have any comments or questions post them below and i'll get back to you or any other suggestions for videos i'd appreciate it anyway thanks